We have opened a new channel for those who like to look at the detailed process of creating a project. While there are only a few videos, but we are working on their creation. We promise that it will be interesting. The link is in the description. Hi friends! A long time ago, I repaired UPS, which belonged to my friend. I had a video about it. Due to improper installation of batteries, the charging circuit died. The damage was serious, so serious that the board was partly burned. That UPS was repaired and handed over to the owner, but after some time, the owner offered to sell it to me because he no longer used it. I used it extremely rarely because I had a more powerful and high-quality uninterruptible power supply, so it stayed idle for a long time until I decided to make another device more useful to me, or rather a welding machine. Yes, I will break the working UPS. Vandalism? Maybe. But UPS of this class without bells and whistles, now we can buy for pennies, especially without batteries. And what I'm going to make from this UPS is rather expensive pleasure. The device is specific, designed for welding twist wires with a carbon electrode. Why do we need it? The main and most popular way to connect wires is soldering with solder. But solder isn't eternal, and when we need a durable mounting, the welding of wires is more reliable. Welding is literally eternal. The advantage is that there will be no additional losses and heating at the welding point. This is like a solid wire. In the case of soldering with the solder under large currents, the solder may even melt. But before welding, the wires are twisted together and welded. A drop formed at the welding point is typical characteristics of this method. I must say that it is 20 volts unit, that is, it operates on two series connected batteries of 12 volts each. It is important that the welding machine, or rather the transformer, provide such a no-load voltage, which would be enough to form an arc. Therefore, a transformer from a 12 volt UPS will not work. The maximum will be the melting of the wire due to a short circuit, but we will not get high-quality welding with a beautiful drop. In our case, the voltage on the secondary winding is about 26 volts. This is enough to form an arc. Of course, under load there will be a voltage drop, but not to critical values. If you have a transformer with a lower output voltage, for example from a 12V UPS, then find the similar one and connect the secondary windings in series to increase the total voltage. The power of our UPS is about 400 watts. Let's disassemble. Here the traces of a mini fire are clearly visible. A few words about the board. The whole circuit is based on the CG3524 controller. In addition, there are a large number of LM339 comparators. We need only a transformer from this device. It's quite solid, both in iron and in windings. The weight is also corresponding. By the way, the windings are copper, which pleases. I think that the UPS is rather old and that times they didn't save copper. The transformer has a low voltage, 24 volt winding with a tap from the middle. A mains winding with taps and an additional low power winding. Now we have to find the mains winding. First, we cut off all the excess and then clean the ends of the wires. Next, take a multimeter, put it on meter mode and find those ends between which the greatest resistance. In my case, it is about 8 ohms. Now, we connect incandescent lamp of 40 to 100 watts in series with the previously tested winding and then into mains. Don't forget about safety and isolate all exposed wires. The lamp is for security. At bad situation, it will limit the current and will not allow the winding to burn and not knock out the automata at your place. If the lamp doesn't glow, everything is fine. Next, we turn the multimeter into the mode of measuring alternating voltage and check the voltage on the power winding. As you can see, the voltage is about 26 volts. The transformer we can put aside for a while. Next, we need a carbon electrode. In building stores, you can sometimes find carbon electrodes with copper coating. But it's easier to buy a D-format battery 
They have a carbon road, which is great for all purposes. It is important to note that such an electrode is present only in ordinary salt batteries, not alkaline ones. We disassemble the battery and pull out the electrode, and the damaged battery must be disposed of properly returned for recycle. About welding current, at first I wanted to add a circuit for limiting the welding current based on a triac, but experiments have shown that this is not necessary. In this case, welding will occur at the maximum value of the current, but this doesn't affect to weld the wires of small caliber. For this transformer, the short circuit current is more than 100 amperes. In that mode, the transformer will quickly burn. But that is possible only if of the electrode will sticking to wire. In our case, it is coal electrode and cannot stick to the copper wire. So with this too, everything is okay. In addition, the current will be partially limited by the resistance of the electrode and the wires. Due to the high temperature arc, we have the ability to weld wires, the cross section of which is much larger than the cross section of the transformer winding. Transformers from a UPS aren't designed for long-term work under a heavy load. Therefore, their overheating is possible. But in this case, no one is going to use the device for hours without respite. Just turned on, weld and turned off. During this time, even the windings don't heat up. Now we need to make a holder for the electrolode and the ground. For the ground, we can just take pliers, attach wires to them, and that's all. I decided to make a convenient holder for the electrode. I found a mounting terminal of the appropriate diameter into which my carbon electrode freely enters. Then I found a copper pipe in old stocks, flattened it out. Well, then everything was sealed together and got such thing. It may seem that the soldered places will heat up during operation. Yes, it's true. But the solder doesn't melt because the heat capacity of connections is high and the heat is quickly transferred to the handle. I also isolated the handle with heat-resistant captain tape. Then I took the pliers, removed the insulation and soldered the wire to it. This is iron and can be tinned with the use of soldering acid. If you're interested how I have soldered such massive areas, then there is the answer, a 300 watt soldering iron. Next we need to refine all, isolate the bare areas and do the box. It is taken from a computer power supply. Cooling removed, it isn't necessary here. I set the transformer, insulated all unnecessary things, fixed the wires with clamps and that's all. By the way, I wasn't lazy and even made the ground. The device doesn't contain any semiconductor. The connection is simple so that anyone with basic knowledge of electronics can cope with this. To protect the circuit from accidental short circuits at this input, you can install a fuse or circuit breaker. The maximum output current in the short circuit mode, as said earlier, is about 100 amperes, while the current consumption from the mains reaches 9 to 10 amperes. I have an automatic circuit breaker just for 10 amperes, and it happens that it doesn't work. So I strongly recommend using breaker for 8 amperes, and if you have a similar transformer. Well, in the end, I will try to weld the wires of the most different sections together and see what this device is capable of.
I think that for such a simple and budget device, it is quite good performance. Of the main advantages, low cost, high reliability, because there is nothing to break, a relatively small weight and compact size. It can connect large diameter wires, which allows the device to be used not only for amateur, but also for professional purposes. Definitely in the future I will actively use this homemade welder unit. It seems to be all. Don't forget to subscribe to my Instagram. And if you have any questions, you're welcome to our group. All links in the description. At this, I say goodbye until we meet again. With you as always, was Kasyan TV.